What's up everybody? Welcome to Kun with Chaim. So I've seen many comments where I'm getting asked how to deploy the WebRTC video chat applications that I've been building. So we've got the file transfer application, we've got the screen share application, just a basic video chat application, doesn't matter. And just about all of them, I've pretty much already gotten at least one person asked me in just about every one of these videos how to actually deploy it. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to answer that right now. So the plan is we're going to take the uh, simple native WebRTC video chat application that we built a couple weeks ago, and we're, go we're going to go ahead and deploy that to Heroku. Now, if you've actually missed that video, I'm going to leave a link to it down in the description box below, or alternatively, you can find a link to it up in the cards. I would suggest that you watch that video, but you don't have to watch that video in order to understand this video, because mostly what this video is about is actually deploying an application with the setup that I use. So if you've watched any one of my videos before, you already know that the setup that I typically use is I pretty much have my sort of root of the application will be the sort of backend code. And then within there, there's going to be a folder called client, which is usually like a React application that was, you know, bootstrap using create React app. And that's going to go ahead and be my client application. Pretty much any application that I build that has this setup, this is the way that I deploy it. And now I'm going to be using Heroku to deploy this application. But that being said, I'm not going to be focusing too much on the Heroku aspect of it. I'm going to be focusing more on sort of setting up the code base to get ready to be deployed. I will ultimately deploy it. But the point is, if you want to learn more about Heroku specifically, I have a separate video for that. And you can find a link to that as well down in the description box below or alternatively up in the cards. So with all that introduction out of the way, let's actually start getting this application ready to be deployed. So as you can see, this is what we have so far, right? If, if you know, you can download the code, you can, I can leave a link to this code down in the description box below. So you can actually download this code and then you can actually, um, you know, follow along with me to actually get this deployed. So one of the first things that we're going to want to do is deploy a package or install a package called .env. So .env allows us to pretty much read from the environment variable. So, you know, there's some default environment variables that you can read from like node env and stuff like that. But we are actually going to want to in create a variable for the port because Heroku is going to pretty much insert some kind of port to let our application run on. And this is not specific to Heroku. A lot of sort of deployment applications or sort of the deployment environments do this. And so because, you know, you typically have your port sort of hard coded when you're just developing locally, but you kind of want to have the ability to have the, in, the port set at the environment level. That's why we want to use something like .env to actually allow that to happen. So all we need to do is come up to the top of the file. We need to simply require .env. So then we'd say .env.config. And so now instead of saying server that lives in port 8000, what we can do is we can say const port is equal to, well, we can just say process.env.port, just like so, or 8000. So now when we're running locally and process.env.port is not actually going to get set, it'll just go to 8000. Otherwise, it's going to be whatever the port was set by whoever uh, we're using to deploy. And again, in our case, we're going to be using Heroku. So now what we need to do is just come over here pass that in and then we can also actually go ahead and update this to use uh, the string templates like so we can say server is whoops running on port and then we'll just use some string interpolation port just like that okay so that's one basic thing that we need to do next what we're going to want to do is in the root of the application we're going to want to create a file called a proc file and again this is going to be very Heroku specific, and I'm not going to focus on what this really does in this video. Again, if you want to learn more about that, I have a separate video that discusses this in more detail. But pretty much all that's going to happen is this is going to tell Heroku which command to actually run when the application gets uh, deployed. The next bit of work that we need to do is actually going to exist in the package of JSON. So what we're doing here is we pretty much just added two scripts to this app to this uh, server side package JSON. The first one is going to be a start script, and this is the very same start script that we sort of specified here. We're basically saying, Roku, when you're going to deploy, run the yarn start command, and that's the one that we're finding right over here. And then what it's doing is it's pretty much saying, it's saying that the environment is now going to be equal to prod. We're going to say prod is equal to true. Of course, you can use the more, more correct node and is equal to production, but it doesn't really make much of a difference. You just want to have some way to signal to your code that you're currently in production mode, and we're very soon going to see why that matters. And then all it's doing after that is we're going to say node server.js. That means go ahead and start up the actual server application by running the node command on our server.js file. We then have a post install script. Um, this basically is like a little hook that you can sort of attach to your package JSON scripts that will run after the, the uh, actual installation of the, the scripts are done. In other words, what Heroku is going to do is it's going to pull down our code. It's going to go ahead and run Yarn or NPMI to actually go ahead and install the uh, dependencies. Once that's done, we want it to do something immediately afterwards. And so that's why we go ahead and create this post install hook. And then what it's going to do is it's going to go and see the internet client application and then run Yarn there. 
So we can actually go ahead and also install our actual client set, uh, dependencies as well. Okay, so coming back into the server.js file, there's one last little change that we kind of need to do here to get this to work. And that's gonna be this little snippet of code here. So all we're pretty much doing is we're having a simple, we have a simple if check that says, if we're currently in production environment, let's go ahead and serve the client build folder statically, right? So we're pretty much gonna go to the dir name, which is the current directory then move up to the client folder into the build folder. That is going to be what we're gonna serve statically. And then we're pretty much gonna have a simple catch all request and any request that the server gets, just go ahead and send back the index.html at which point the client set application is gonna take over, React Router will take over, and it's all basically going to work. So the idea basically is when we're running this application locally in development mode, we typically have to have two terminals open. We have one pointing to the actual server and where we're kind of running either yarn start and node server.js. And then at the same time, we also have to have a client folder open to actually run the yarn start command there. And both these applications sort of need to run at the same time. But for the sake of production, we obviously don't want to do that. We pretty much want our actual React application to just be served statically. And we want our node so server to do that. And so the way to do that is we pretty much tell our node server that when you're in production mode, go ahead and find that uh, folder, that build folder that's going to exist in the client folder, serve that statically. And then any request that you get that you don't understand, just go ahead and send off the index.html that you're going to find inside of the build folder that it's inside the client folder. That's pretty much all we need to do within the uh, server side application. We just have one small change that we have to do in the client side application. So coming over to the client side applications package JSON, we go to the script section and we simply add a script. We once again also go ahead and add a post install. And then for this post install, we're pretty much telling it to run the yarn build command. So again, the flow is basically gonna be a little something like this. Roku is gonna pretty much pull down our code. It's going to go ahead and install the dependencies. Once the dependencies are done installing, this post install hook is gonna run. And then what it's gonna do, is gonna go ahead and change directories into the client folder. And then it's gonna go ahead and run the yarn command within the client folder. So it's gonna install the dependency to the server, change directories to the client, then install the dependencies within, within the client folder. So when we're in the client folder, once the dependencies are done installing, the client folder's post install hook is gonna run, at which point it's gonna go ahead and run the yarn build command to actually go ahead and statically build all of our React assets to then have it get ready to be served by our node server statically. And that's pretty much all the setup that we actually have to do in the code. The next little bit is just to kind of actually get this deployed within our within our command line using all the Heroku commands. Let's get on that now. So the first thing we do is we're just gonna say Heroku create, and we're just gonna leave it with, give, we're just gonna let it give us some default name, doesn't really matter, we're just gonna Heroku create. There we go. Okay, so I did realize that I did make one mistake. One of the first things we do wanna do actually is go ahead and say git init. So if you've already run Heroku Create, that's fine, but um, the, the first real thing you wanna do is actually turn your own project into a Git repository. But in this case, I kinda of messed up. I first did Heroku Create, so that's fine. Nothing's gonna go wrong with this. I just have to make sure that now I run Git init, which I've just done. Now I can go back and run the other command, which is gonna be Heroku Git Remote, and then actually set the Heroku Git Remote to our project that was just created by Heroku Create command. So now we can go ahead and hit Enter on this. And so now our actual project is pointing to the Heroku uh, remote branch. And so now we can pretty much just start running through the actual git commands to get this deployed. So we're just gonna go ahead and say git add dot. So we're gonna go ahead and stage everything, git commit. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and say uh, that, you know, we're ready to deploy. That'll be our message ready to deploy. And then finally, the last command is gonna be git push Heroku master. So this will take a minute as it runs through the entire process of actually installing our dependencies locally changing directories to then install the dependencies within the client folder. And then when that's done, it's gonna go ahead and run the client build. And then finally, when all that's done, the actual application will be ready to go ahead and play with on in the browser on some sort of actual remote URL that can get shared with just about anybody. So let's wait and see what happens. Okay, so one thing that I just noticed that I forgot to do in our server.js file. Um, so in other words, what happened was I actually, the build succeeded. I then went to the actual browser to try to actually see if the link works before I show it to you guys. And then it turns out that it blew up, it didn't actually work. And the reason why that was is because in the server.js file, I forgot to actually import the path module. So as you can see down here in this code, we are actually relying on the path module. And so all we need to do is just go ahead and say path, const path is equal to require path. And this is of course a built-in node module, so there's no need to install anything. All we need to do is just go ahead and require it. So now that that's done, we can once again run through all the steps to redeploy this, and I'm gonna do that now. And when that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the actual application live in Heroku in the browser. So hang tight. Okay, so now that the build's done, let's go ahead and grab this URL. Let's go ahead and pop it into the browser. Okay, so as you can see, we now have our create room button. Let's go ahead and create a room. We're gonna go ahead and say allow. And there is me. 
again and then let's open up another tab at the same URL and then me is me again. So now you have three of me. I'm sorry, I know that's a lot, but the application has been successfully deployed uh, on Heroku. That does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week in another video. Perfect.